Welcome to another episode of Tandas on Keka. And we are delighted to have again two guests. And we're going to be discussing delayed pregnancies, mature motherhood, everything that has to do with the fact that we have had children later on in life by choice or by circumstance. So I'm delighted to have again Dr. <laughs> Maggie Gitu and with us a new general badass. <laughs> That's what I was told to, to, to call you a general badass everything. But Dr. Kabugo Kamau, who is a pharmacist, a entrepreneur, and general badass. Is that how I was supposed to introduce you? I think that's what you <laughs> That's what I was told, and I think I've done a good job. But I would like to hear more about who you are, and so we're going to get into that so that we can discuss generally what mature motherhood looks like. And Actually, you can start by saying, do you even like being called a mature mother? No. What does that look like? Are we, are we, are we talking to you out of context? <laughs> you know, like what, what is mature motherhood? Honestly. Um, so before we even get into that, introduce yourself to the people who are listening. Tell us about you. Just a okay. bit. Well, I think you did a good job. I am, <laughs> I am Kapugo Kamau. Doctor, I am a pharmacist. I am a mother of two boys. I am an entrepreneur. I do a lot of things. That's why I'm a general badass. <laughs> um, Love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I am a co-parent of, of those two boys. Hmm. Dr. Maggie Gitu, thank you for gracing our our podcast again. So do you want to go through the introduction again? <laughs> Actually, what I want to say is that I am honored. Really, I am to be included. And just one little correction. I am not yet a doctor. Mm. I have an MA. Mm. Um, although in the Kenyan course, I say, doctor, doctor, mm. but officially it's important that I ethically that you know that I'm not a doctor. Yeah. I am a marriage, family, and sex therapist. And I am not a mother yet. And yet I am older. <laughs> so I am, you know. You can speak out of that uh, from that perspective. Of that perspective yes. Which is fine. Um, I mean, so thank you for coming to join us again. Um, but the first question that I asked, and I will ask again, geriatric pregnancies. Let's talk about those. What are those? <laughs> and how do you feel when you go, when you went to the hospital? Second time, because I know the first one is older. Please, actually, first, tell us how old your kids are. First of all, let me put it out there that I never wanted any children. Mm. It was not a priority for me. It was none. It was not on my vision board. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. First or so second? Both. Both, mm. both my children have been head and uh, head on collisions, egg and sperm. And it's like, <laughs> what just happened? And <laughs> collision egg and sperm. <laughs> like they collided. They collided and then it's like, whoops, <laughs> what happened? So those are both my kids. Now, the interesting thing is I've had both my kids in the U.S. And in the U.S., once you're black, uh, female, of course, uh, female pregnancy, right? Um, the, I was pregnant when I was 33 or 34 with my first child. And I was shocked when I was placed in the high risk category mm. because I was black. It was my first child mm. and I was 30 something. Mm. You know, if it was, if I was younger, then maybe that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And I was in so much shock. I'm like, mm. how? I'm fat. I mean, I'm young. I'm young. But yeah. they, they, so they was explained and I knew already that I was considered high risk. And then the second one, I was high. In fact, the doctor, the first day the doctor saw me, she was like, we're admitting you now. And I said, but I've been having an amazing pregnancy. Yeah. In Kenya. I walked in there. How many was, months? Okay, that one has a story behind it because <laughs> I've always had uh, a menorrhea, which, you know, mis period. Explain to, oh, okay. Yeah. Some of us don't. Uh, and so I would never know when my period would ah, come. I'd have okay. two periods a year. So even as I was pregnant, I was just going about my happy days. So I found out I was pregnant when I was 18 and a half weeks. Ah. And so when I went for the ultrasound and, you know, the, the, if I, that story I should tell you another day. <laughs> but 
But it was shocking when the when the radiology technician was like, ah, madam. <laughs> I'm thinking you're gonna be kidding me. That's not how you break. Was that his reaction really? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he he. When I walked in and I said, I think I'm pregnant, and then actually I had I, so much was going on in my life. But anyway, I I had walked in. I said, I'm just going to order my own ultrasound, and I walked in there and they said, Doctor, I remember me waking up. I said, I see Joey. Ah, but you don't remember, don't go, Sana. And the pale ukunwe maji, Joey, your blood is full and your tone is zuri. So I drank first cup, second cup, third cup. For, eh, then they were like, okay, so I'm going to go to the hospital. So I lay down. And then the guy, the ultrasound probe, it barely touched my stomach. Mm-hmm. And he goes, ah! Where are you going to go? I can't even go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the Anyway, so that and, happened. And, and honestly, okay, hold on. Mm-hmm. So you you felt like you were pregnant and that's why you went to the hospital no, for yourself no, no, or what was no. the story behind if anybody remembers it was about the time I was having the court case with Rusinga about my son's dreadlocks mm-hmm. and that is the day the ruling was coming in mm-hmm. but I decided instead of going to court I'm just going to go about my regular business mm-hmm. so I had business at the pharmacy board and I went to the pharmacy board and I parked my car and then one of my colleagues just passed me and he said Dr. Ima titi na hii tumbo hazipelekani I said what do you mean <laughs> he said ima titi na hii tumbo hazi hazipelekani and okay. I was wearing something like this so the audacity yeah I'm sp- I mean and I was sitting in the car so he's standing so he's standing over me like this so he look at my boobs and he's like Yeah, my titi na hiyo tumbo hazipelekani. Okay. Like, what do you mean? I'm so shocked. Do you know I just reversed my car out of there. <laughs> I went to Hallingham, I bought a pregnancy kit, mm. I bought two. Mm. I went home. I remember the house had opened the door. I just told her, "I can just move. Just move." <laughs> And I went upstairs. I peed on the first one. I'm like, uh-huh. I two peed. St- I even saved pee yeah. for the second one. <laughs> two sticks. I just came out, I took myself to Nairobi Women's and said, I have to see to believe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was getting that that uh, ultrasound and being punished with pl- glasses of water, my lawyer was calling me from court. Mm. And I'm like, imagine my fish has become so big yes. now. I have a bigger fish yes, to fry. I'm not going to do this right now. <laughs> I don't care about the dreadlocks. <laughs> I don't care. I have a life yeah. growing. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that now changed even the whole trajectory of that story because now all of a sudden I am heading to 40 mm. and I have a fetus inside me. So a first baby 34. Mm-hmm. Second baby 40 to say me to now, more generally. Yes, 40. Yes. Uh-huh. Tell me about <laughs> cuz I want to I want to hear because I I also want to tell you my experience when I went to the hospital the first time with my second uh-huh. at 36. Uh-huh. Um <laughs> the when they told me to do that uh, test for down syndrome mm-hmm. and and the the first thing the doctor told me actually and I, and I and I found that very very annoying he 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 threw the word geriatric pregnancy at me mm-hmm. so i asked him what do you mean because me i feel young i am hot mm-hmm. general badass <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to tell me friend no. <laughs> he says to me do you know you're born with your ex This is a 35 year old child and I looked at him and I was like but me I'm not 35 I'm not going to birth a 35 year old child so what are you trying to say mm-hmm. the conversation was not respectful is what I was trying to say when you tell me that I am going to I have a 35 year old egg in my stomach and I have to take a test to determine that my child won't be born with complications there's a better way to have that conversation so I want to hear what happened at 40 <laughs> <laughs> when you went to the doctor the first time actually so i had to really quickly find a, a, an obgyn and the one was recommended and i went and saw her she was a very laid back doctor in fact so laid back i think her attitude was it's not your first rodeo mm. you've had another one mm. so you know how this goes so she actually didn't do a very good job with me because <laughs> because of that attitude so she and especially and and we talk about this as healthcare workers we tend to get poor 
service from our colleagues because they assume you know you know you know mm -hmm. so i would go get an ultrasound and then she'd ask me so what did it say <laughs> what, what? what? Did, you? <laughs> did you read the ultrasound for yourself in yeah. December? and then i generally lose weight during my pregnancies and this one was concerning because that's why i didn't think i was pregnant because i wasn't gaining weight mm -hmm. you know because that's what you expect um, so I, I had concerns that I was losing weight. I was like, ah, don't worry. It's not a big deal. So I told her, I said, well, I, I think I'll go have this child in the States. So I need my records and whatever. And she, she got them for me. But when I, and oh, so I had this thing. They, they always did a glucose test on me mm -hmm. to, to check for, uh, gestational diabetes. Mm -hmm. So I told her, I said, we need to do that test. She's like, you don't need it. You're fine. I said, no, 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 oh. no. Let's just do it just so that I can, I can feel, with, you know, better about yeah. this situation. And she really, really ignored that request. So when I landed in the States, the first day, <laughs> the first day I went to the doctor, she said, how, how, how pregnant? Okay. How, how far along <laughs> are we? I said, I only know what the ultrasound says. <laughs> you know, she's like, so you don't know? Yeah. I said, no. She said, so I'm working blind. Yeah. I said, so am I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And so she was like, we're admitting you right away. I said, why? She said, geriatric, geriatric pregnancy, oh high God. risk, African American, black, you know, female. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then also the fact that I'd, it had been what, six, seven years between that one and the next one. And I thought I said, no, I, I feel fine, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so she said, well, what we're going to do then is have you come in here every single day. We have to what? monitor everything, every single day. From the day you... From that first visit. Yeah. So I said, so what are the risks? What is it that you're worried about? So I said, do you know you're turning... In fact, by the time I got there, I had already turned 40. So she's like, do you know... First of all, we don't know where in Africa you <laughs> come from. from. <laughs> with what with this uh, baby that we don't even know how old they are yeah. and how big they are yeah. and whatever. And so one of the doctors asked me, have you ever had, they did some blood work. Mm. And they said, have you had your glucose tolerance test done? I said, no, the doctor in Kenya didn't think it was necessary. They were like, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> you're going? I was immediately assigned to a high risk gestational diabetes OBG. Oh, what? And I went and did the test. And sure enough, you had no. I had gestational oh, diabetes. No. And what happens with gestational diabetes or how they explained it is, so I was getting closer. Remember, we're working blind. We're just going by the ultrasound mm -hmm. dates, you know? Um, and so, ev so I had to go see the doctor every day. And then they, so the child, the baby also has symptoms. So they pee a lot in the, in the womb mm. and what happens is now the amniotic fluids increases and increases mm. so now they start putting pressure on the baby mm. so one of the days i went and i was having all these braxton hicks and i went fortunately i was working in a medical center so i was at work and i called the doctor and i said i'm kind of feeling something so it's like get to the er now mm. And I go and I, and I always remember with my first child, my sister used to tell me, God, don't let them put a single IV in you. Cause once the IV is in, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So I went to the ER and they're doing all these things. And I'm, I'm remembering, don't get, don't get that IV. Don't get that IV. So I, I said, don't put an IV in me. Yeah. You can put the belt, monitor all you want to monitor, but you're not hooking me onto anything. Mm -hmm. So that day the doctor came and he told me, he said, you know, I really need to take that baby out today. And I'm like, but I'm, I have another child. Yeah. Who's going to take care of the little yeah. one? I mean, he wasn't little, he was six. But mm. remember, we are we are two in the States you, and yeah. it's just the two of us. Yeah. So he's like, go make arrangements. But tomorrow this baby has to come out. In fact, you leave to, tomorrow morning, go straight to now that the, the, the head honcho yeah. of this high-risk pregnancy mm. that they considered I had. And honestly, I went there, they told me, we don't even care if you have made arrangements. If you haven't made arrangements for your child, we're going to make the arrangements for you. Child Protection Services will pick up your child. Mm -hmm. But you're going. Mm -hmm. And I was wheeled into the year and the baby was cut out. That same. Within How minutes. Many months? Well, do we know? Oh. <laughs> All we knew is that he was cooked. Yeah. He was ready. He, he was, was ready fully baked. Yeah, I mean, by then I was, by, oh, by, by, we were thinking maybe 30, 37, 38 weeks. Yeah, but yeah. 
I had, I mean, the way they, in fact, I felt like I was imprisoned because they were like, you're not leaving. Mm -hmm. And my son, the, now the younger one, I mean, the the one I had then was in school. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I have to figure out who's going to pick him up, where he's going to go tonight. And do you think the treatment in the States and here would have been different? Like the, the treatment here would have been different? It was already different. You see, even just the way my, how laser like fame my obedient here mm. was, and she's like, ah, you've done it before, you know, mm. it's not going to be, which was, which was kind of reassuring, but because I'm a healthcare person myself, mm. I was like, I, there are some things we are not doing that we should be doing. I'm actually really glad that you started by saying you never wanted children mm-hmm. to begin with, mm. because that's another group of women. I mean, I'm, an older mom, I would be considered geriatric mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I don't have children. And the question is always, Oh, what's wrong with her? Why doesn't she want children? You will change your mind. You'll get lonely when you're older, but you don't even know whether I have medical issues. You don't know whether it's just simply not been an option for me or whether I, I don't want kids. I mean, and I love that. That's the first thing you said, because it just normalizes the, the truth of the matter that I can be a mom of two boys and love them and remember the drama around their birth mm-hmm. with laughter mm-hmm. and also admit that they were not planned joys and blessings. They, they just popped up. The sperm and the, <laughs> it was the a egg collision egg. on, on <laughs> Uhuru Highway. Just kind of, <laughs> that's why they were all, they were both surprised. Yeah. Right? You see why I was surprising at 18, 18 and a half weeks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. cooking so quietly. Completely. Not planned. Yes. No. Not, partnered not nope. anything just nope. boom yeah, this happened boom. but i also kind of think that um part of so i'm a, i'm a last boy of very many and i have six sisters i'm the last one mm, wow. and when you look at my sisters i think my mom and and society in those days put so much fear in us about pregnancy that it was one of the things that you knew once you it happens you're a failure mm-hmm. i think that was the psychology for us mm-hmm. and for me it was also like i want to enjoy my life i want to enjoy my marriage i want to be able to travel and i understand and i had seen people who had children earlier or whatever and how it just stagnated for that moment you yeah. know you you can't do so many things mm-hmm. So I had made the decision that I didn't want any children and I was married and we were just living the good life. But that fear was, I think, in all of us unconsciously as sisters because of all of us, all except one, had children over 30. Mm -hmm. I have a sister who had her first and only child at 40. Mm -hmm. But it is that fear of God that was put in us mm-hmm. about you bring us a pregnancy here <laughs> without yeah. a man, yeah. without a man, yeah. or with, or, you know, or even, or even with a man, even with a man, because you can bring the pregnancy with a man, but you haven't finished your college, mm-hmm. you uh-huh. haven't achieved much, you yes. know, you, now you're just Who's getting into the marriage, mm-hmm. being dampened by marriage, and yeah, 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 and children, and your children just change everything. So that fear was in us, I believe. And I think my even my sister who had her children in the 20s, she was in her late 20s when she had the first one. But we were paralyzed. Are so you carrying? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Generational trauma. Yes. 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 And I think when I, when I, in fact, I used to laugh. I laughed at myself when I was pregnant at 40 because I used to say, how, how, how can someone be pregnant at 40? <laughs> you know how and my mom had me when she was 38 mm-hmm. you know so i thought that is the limit i mean mm-hmm. and she had so many kids 38 if you have a 38 magic mm-hmm. then here yeah, i was crossing my 40th year with a seven month pregnancy <laughs> <laughs> and your second and how she had her last her last yeah, at 38. 38. 38 yes yeah so I thought, where? Well, no wonder we are called geriatric. Because I, I used to, I used to, in fact, I used to look at people having kids at 40. I laugh. I'm like, you're mad. Like you already escaped. Yes. And then you're just yes. trapping yourself at the end. And you know, of course, there's all those talks about the risks of having them later. Yeah. Why are you taking the yeah. risk? You know? Mm-hmm. But those risks, if you notice, mm-hmm. I only talked about now. Because our parents never had children well, at, our, at their age. Mm-hmm. They're having 
children, six, seven, eight children mm-hmm. at 30 or 40, mm-hmm. you know, like that's your last born, your yeah. retirement baby. Mm-hmm. But ukiona, first born wake, she had them at 21. My mom had Correct. me at 21. Mm-hmm. So literally, we grew up together. Mm-hmm. So having children right now at your age is like, is a norm. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't a norm then. Yeah. Because if I think about my grandmother, and I don't know, maybe this, my mom can confirm this, but she said she got married at 14. Mm. And they're eight. And, you know, she she died very late on in her years. Because if you're first born, is in their 70s. Mm. Honestly, and you, you and, and kids, yeah, yes. you grew up with yeah. your kids because you, yeah. you're 90 and your child is 70. Mm. <laughs> Together, you're, you're aged, <laughs> you're old people. So, I mean, like you can see there's such a big gap. And I wanted to ask, like, because I know in myself, when I first had my first child, who is now 14, and my second child, who is now four, there's a very big difference in how I mothered them mm-hmm. throughout that entire time. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to ask you, and also you can share your experience mm-hmm. as not singling you out because you don't no, have a no, child. No, I'm, I'm happy but I'm sure you. you're like, you know, aunties, you have you have experience in how women mother. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've experienced having a child late and the benefits? Because there are benefits of having a child later on in your years. So when I had my first one, of course, yeah, I was in my thirties. I was in the best shape of my life. I was dreaming. I was single. I was making lots of money. So my son and I traveled. We were like inseparable. We would go anywhere. We we'd look. I'd work um, seven days, seven nights. And then I'd be off seven nights. So I'd ask him, so where do we go next time? Mm-hmm. And we'd pick somewhere. And he was so badass. I mean, he had his little car suitcase. He knew all the processes. In fact, that security, some mm-hmm. kind of guy's like, come on now. You know the drill <laughs> by now. You know. <laughs> we had amazing times. with, with And I had energy. In fact, I, I remember putting him in the swimming pool when he was six months. You know, he had read all the textbooks. Mm-hmm. You knew what to do, how to do it. The only limitation was we lived in the States and it was, everything had to be planned and structured. Mm. And and so when I would come to Kenya and we'd spend time here, I mean, the child would just blossom, wow, mm. you know, with the aunties and the cousins and the nannies and the, and then we'd go back to the States and we all go, yeah. so that's when I made the decision to move. I said, if for nothing else, let me move to Kenya for this child yes, because yeah. he's just stifled in, in the States. So... We moved over here and yes, he flourished and, and, but the difference with coming here is now you have all the help you need. Mm. So at some point I used to be, I used to ask, may I, may I please see my child? <laughs> please. Because if we <laughs> then got this super nanny <laughs> yeah. who, who understood the assignment, yeah. mm-hmm. my job is to make, give you child. all the peace yeah. you can have. Yeah. So she would take the child and disappear. Mm. And I'm thinking, I haven't <laughs> seen my child in days. <laughs> Where's my son? Can we please meet somewhere? You know, mm. so that was also very, <laughs> it had its challenges too, mm. because at some point you think, am I still the mother? <laughs> yeah, because this child just, well, kids are that way. I mean, mm. whoever's giving them the attention and the love. And, and then I mean, I was working. So yeah. during the day I'm off, I go to work, I come back. By the time you come home, Everything is sorted. Even Things are sorted. Asleep. The child is even asleep. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, oh, and your son is like, yeah. Ta-da, yeah. I did it. I'm like, no, I just tried. Yeah. So that was that one was different. And then, but but we still had we still traveled a lot when we could, and that was our thing. Mm. And then I had this other one. So this other one, of course, now the 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 sibling thing over now I'm no longer the only one, and that I, that played really rough, you know. But it's I a, guess that plays. It's a seven year gap. It's a seven, seven, gap. seven mm-hmm. six, seven mm-hmm. year gap. Um, that one was tough. That one was tough because I remember we would sleep in the same bed. Okay, I had a bassinet for the baby, and then I would sleep next to the baby, and then my son would sleep in the same bed, but. And I remember one time, you know, so I'd face the baby because mm. sometimes I just Obviously, pull him over to yeah. breastfeed. And, and one day my son woke me up in the night and he said, Mommy, I don't understand why you just faced that baby. You forget I'm oh. here. Because honestly, I would sleep facing the baby. Yeah. So he said, Mommy, 
put the baby in between in us yeah. so you will face both of us. Oh, what? Oh my God. <laughs> and I had to do, and you know, of course, in my mind, I'm like, oh, you're going to punch him. You're going to kick him. He's like, so be it. But put but that baby least, between us so, so that you don't give me your, your back. back. Yeah, like ni kama hamoni. Because all of a sudden me. the baby takes over mm. and it's like, don't do this, don't do that, don't mm. climb there, don't do that. You know, and he's like, do you, you know see like me? The husband. <laughs> when the husband feels left out, exactly. just everything that you have everything sur- is surrounding the, the, the partner. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm, I'm, I'm also here. Sometimes yeah. men feel like, Kwani, I'm only here to produce the sperm now that the baby is here, I've been forgotten. And unfortunately, I think women say, oh, you're an adult, you can take care of yourself, which I don't think is also the right approach. It's that everybody has their space. Mm-hmm. Like even if you have two kids, they occupy your whole heart, but in two different, exactly. two different ways. It's, it's not like you get 37% and you, you get 22. Exactly. So everyone has their space. And you can't yeah. assume they know. Yes. You have to be intentional yes. about yes. creating that yes. space. Yes. That, that view, we, we don't hear it often. Mm. Yeah. Because you're like think, thinking about it like a single parent with two kids mm. who you're looking after. Mm. The gap. You know, that people usually say, and, and now, you know, the, the challenge to that narrative is you, you should not be both man and woman mm. for your kids. Mm. You should not be both mother and father. Mm. You should operate as mother. Mm-hmm. Don't divide yourself and say, you know, I can be both mother and father to this child. You cannot. Mm-hmm. So that, that view that you've just said, mm. where obviously you're thinking, because when you have a two parent, two partner home, mm. The, the issue now is that the husband feels left out. Uh, we're talking about getting overtouched, mm-hmm. oversexed, over what? He's You're under, thinking about that. Yeah. Him, he's undertouched, under he's sexed, undertouched, under sexed, under, whatever. Under everything. But it's about him. Mm. You know, he's, he's saying the same things that your son has said. Mm. You know, you're giving all your time, your, your affection, your boobs <laughs> mm. <laughs> to this child and you're mm. leaving me out. You're giving me your back mm. because I see you're, you're co-sleeping or whatever mm. it is that you're doing. Mm. But now hearing it from, a child, because the child does feel that. Yeah. Because if you think about it, and even I think about it, if you have a room that you've you've given to the new child, because everything is going to be about the new child, yeah. right? Um, oh, the new baby, the new this, the new that. You'll put the bassinet next to you. Mm-hmm. And even if you are co-sleeping with your other child, they will move them to the other room and focus on this on new baby. child, mm-hmm. on baby. Yes. And so the reintegration of this children or child needs to be done in a way that they feel valued and loved and whatever. But now, there's no partner. If you have two people, so like now me, I try and do that more with my older child and my partner and my what, but I wouldn't think too much about, you know, the partner maybe. or One one of them will fall short. There'll mm. be a gap. There'll be definitely a gap. Mm. So for you, because there was no man... Mm you can literally have a conversation with this child and hear him and feel him. But if there was a man in that bed, in that bed, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you would now have two people saying, mom, Mm -hmm. mom, Mm -hmm. babe, babe. And they want want your body for different (laughs) uses. One wants to feel the other one. Yeah. Just watch your boobs. Yeah, for sex, right? <laughs> and you're like, me, you know, I'm just I'm even, I'm even, 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 right? Like, you're even feeling, uh, babe, that, babe, babe. <laughs> yeah, it's it's and then mom, mom. I mean, like, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. And I, and I love that view of just having that, that your son. Mm. Opening your eyes mm. to just understanding. Yeah. And wow, and just being I'm able, able to, to express say, that. Mm. And you being able to hear it. Yes. And because, because, there was never that conversation. You know, you, it's exciting. The baby's in the belly. The baby's, in, but they, they, we never think about what happens when After. this baby comes and what's going to change and what for changes. everybody. Totally we cool. never yeah. had that conversation. Yeah. So even, I, even I was just <coughs> pussyfooting like, okay, what, 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 what did, what, okay, okay, what did you just say? Oh, you need, oh, you I need a glass of milk. Okay, hold. I knew you were old you? enough for milk. <laughs> It's this one who can't talk that I need to. Yeah. And, yeah. Well. and I still want oh, yeah. to yeah. tell the nanny. And yes. I still you want to do the fun well. things. Yes. I still want to do the fun things with him. So I remember when the baby was small and, you know, so I have to take the baby and or wear the baby, right? And we go to this fun fair and there was this big Ferris wheel. And he's like, mommy, let's go, let's go. So I'm like, I can't, can't go, go with the baby. With the baby. Yeah. You know, he told me, Leave give the baby this baby here. to this one. <laughs> 
to be able to go to us to end it and that to to him when the way he expressed it it was give this baby away, away. because they are cramping our lifestyle yes. you know now we can't go on the ferris wheel because of this baby yeah. then give it away the baby is yeah. crying i said i mean i remember telling my mom when my sister my sister and i have a 10 10 year gap mm. yeah 10 and a half and when my mom was pregnant she asked me like do you know do you want a brother do you want a sister and externally i said the christian thing whatever god gives us but actually that night i prayed for a girl for a sister mm. and i literally told god i'm begging mm. you i said dear lord and i was praying quietly so my mom would in here so when she was born a girl i felt like god had done me yes. a solid <laughs> wait until this girl comes home and everybody wanted to see her mm. now i'd been an only child for 10 years so the traveling we used to go coast minimum once a year and mm. it was like go have lunch at golden beach hotel go and go swim and i mean i was mummy's and if you look at my childhood photos mm. like sandak my mom said my sandaks were not kenyan she got them in italy <laughs> oh, hey. for me oh, i was hey. i was the first child in my childhood to have sandaks they even had a song for me because apparently i used to ringa mm. Then comes this one. Mm. Cries all the time. First of all, why are you crying? The attention. And I remember one day my mom opened you know those sandukus from Juwakali. Mm. There was a big black one and she opened it because my sister had gotten yet another bunch of clothes. And I literally cried. <laughs> and my mom at first looked at me and I could tell the irritation and I think it clicked for her like, "Oh, this is this is cuz at first she said this is for the baby and then she i i, I literally remember seeing like like shift for her mm. she said you know and then she called me by my name my home name and she said mwana is so small and you see like this we bought it last week and it doesn't fit It's that's very, why it looks yeah. like she has many clothes but she doesn't have more clothes than you she's just growing so fast and you see like now this one it can't fit her. that's when i was like Right. Oh, they're not just favoring her. And then after that, I don't know whether she told her friends or she did it herself. They would still come see baby, but I started noticing like these things like digestive biscuits. Uh, they'll bring things for, for you me. as well. Yes, because yeah. I had been yeah. like the apple of her eye. Mm. And even now my mom doesn't joke with her I kids. Think it's but at quite... the time I felt I'm not a baby anymore. Yeah. Now I'm the adult. And the end will let a kijiko ya ku swim toto to express breast milk to put in her eye. But I don't care. Those are the things that we actually don't so <laughs> we don't say things out loud my sister is here but um <laughs> I went through something similar because I have a 10 year gap with me and my sister and mm-hmm. so my mom had kids later and she got she got them much later than me so 10 year gap mm-hmm. and for me I just checked out I really 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 hated having other siblings they ruined the math they didn't ruin anything all. about anything i just didn't want to share my space <laughs> with other people in my life i was just like what are you who are you why are you here and why are you here everything just became oh the baby oh there's the this oh there's that i can't do this you can't do that it made me yani i, I just used to feel like i can't i can't deal, I can't deal. so i checked out and my checking out made me not even want to hang out with my parents like i, I used to mm. oh we are going here and then now you're feeling ah, you know those million and 55 bags you have to carry when you have children mm. i'd be the one to carry them uh. so me I, i used to think every time we want to go somewhere we'd have to gather and mm. do things and do things that are appropriate for children and i hated it so i just i just i was like bro no no nope. and i if my sister was to tell you i we started having a relationship much later in life because me I was just like I was not having it. Mm-hmm. So that was my experience. Mm-hmm. My parents never tried to do that. Oh, to do that. oh what? <laughs> my mom was like those are your siblings. That's how you're going to do this. This is how we're going to move. So now with mine the 14 year gap, the 10 year gap as well. We try. <laughs> we try to do the explanation because mm-hmm. I'm like you know and actually and then you know you're a child too. exactly so yeah i try to understand like you're still moana yeah i try to understand her point of view because she's 14 she's a teenager mm. you know if she doesn't want to come with us to places where where, where it's child friendly and appropriate i feel like sometimes it's fine i tell her okay sour you know 
and I try to give her her time. Mm-hmm. But I also try to remember that that 14 year old me who hated, and I say this, I detested hanging out with mm-hmm. with the children. I was just like, I just couldn't. I couldn't understand. I was an only child also yeah. mm-hmm. for 11 years of my life. Yes. And I'm like, things are changing. I don't understand and why you had to go have kids. Like, why? We were dealing. We were mm-hmm. we were good. Mm-hmm. So for me, it wasn't only <laughs> it wasn't only the children. It was uh, the man. <laughs> so she got married and then had kids. And I was like, what? The fuck, Jesus? Like, and like, then, am I not enough? Am I not you? enough? And then, like, you know, we had to move out of this. We were living with my grandparents. We moved out of our grandparents' house. New house, new man, new t- mm. bro. I'm bro. already tired of that. I'm already tired <laughs> for you. I'm like, no, no, like, no, And I'm in class eight. I'm trying to be cool. Trying to, you know, be a singer. Mm-hmm. My mom is telling me to a diaper. I'm like, bro, I'm cramping my style. Anyway. So <laughs> there's so a my vibe, man. completely <laughs> ruining so much everything. And now is when, as I was doing this, this research or thinking about it, I would have loved to have a conversation with my mom. Mm. What benefits were there? When you had me, things were difficult. What about now? Mm-hmm. What opportunities did you have with the second one? The second one has had the best of me. <laughs> I've mellowed. I'm, I'm a little bit more in touch with myself. I'm, I know who I am. I know what I'm about. I'm, I'm reparenting myself through him. He has the best of me. I mean, I, I listen, you know, like the younger one, I mean, I've, I've, I've done a, like three major whoopings, right? <laughs> this, the, the little one, him is just like, well, we can, we can have a conversation. Yeah. You know, when I, when I shout, he'll be like, I'm here. Oh, wow, I'm right yes. here. Mommy, stop. No, I'm your mommy, stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no shouting. Right. No, no, no shouting. No, stop. Yeah. But they, and then he's at that age. I mean, if you ever want to see the purest form of life, have an eight year old. They see the world for what it is, how it is. Mm. You know, I was, I was giving a story. I think I posted on Facebook how he, the other day I went out and stayed out until six something in the morning. And he's like, mom, aren't you in control of yourself? <laughs> Just because your friends want to stay out late, Even can't you, you stay take out yourself, yourself home? home. <laughs> <laughs> like when so the many sun went home, home. home. You, you didn't go home. Yeah. So many options. And so what I try to do because I, you know, I keep telling my kids, we are all little kids mm. just trying to figure it out. So that's why we never have all the answers and we do what we can. Eh? So first of all, I was, te- I was telling my older son, I said, can you imagine of all the topics that I was picked to talk about is the geriatric or mature <laughs> parenting? <laughs> and he says, you know, mom, you shouldn't take it so negatively because, yeah, I mean... You're it's a natural aging. process, you're aging. Oh, but you're not old yeah. to me. You're just old in years, maybe. Oh. So it, it, it's not that bad of a thing to have to talk about. So he asked me, so what would you rather talk about? I said, I really don't know. But he told me, he said, to tell you, when they want to meet the kids of this mature parent, <laughs> he'll be ready. He'll be ready. He'll, he'll, he'll come, come on and, and, come and, and come talk to us about how you've been parenting yeah. him. But the little one has had the best. So I was going to tell you about the conscious efforts now I have to make. So mm-hmm. number one, I have these two boys. I have a partner. All of us are kids trying to find ourselves in this world. And they all want my attention and we all want each other's attention. So a good example is this week. Uh, this week, and, and, and I was, I was having this conversation with Kibali. I have decided, I'm, we are traveling next month, but this week I've had two days with my partner out of town. Today, for Mother's Day, I'm going out, out to have a date with my little boy. Mm-hmm. And he's lucky, I, this was his brother's weekend, but his brother got busy, but we were gonna go away, me and my older son. Mm. So this weekend we're gonna go tonight. We're going to spend a night somewhere and have just mommy and Mm -hmm. him time. And then when his brother comes home, we're going to have mommy and him time too. Mm -hmm. But I've just found you just have to carve out those little Mm -hmm. moments for them because then you, 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 nobody wants to feel like they're not a priority. Mm -hmm. So even if you have those little snippets of you're my priority for the next 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And now my son, my eight year old is starting to understand. He used to be very, She's mine, she's mine, she's mine. 
But now he's like, oh, okay, so whose turn is it with you now? You know, he's accepted that it's okay. You can go with my brother and I will not bother you. You can go with, you know, he's, he's now at that point. So I, but it has taken a while because he thought he owned me and everything. And then of course his brother is like, I just know, I just know he's going to throw a tantrum yeah. and then it's gonna, you know. Gonna so I could start see, I could see his brother now getting fed up yeah. with him, like, yeah. and withdrawing, like you. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, at the end of the day, he takes the day Pre- anyway. Precedent. Yeah. That child, yeah. there's nothing that I can say or do. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I had, I had to stop. And now the 14 year old is also a person. And we, in fact, last weekend when I went to see him in school, his younger brother is like, I want to come. I said, no. He's going to see mommy and mommy only. Deal. Mm. <laughs> so what's that dynamic with a new partner? Of course your partner wants to be the priority. Yeah. The child is like, like you, mm. imagine we were doing just fine. Yeah. Why, why, what's all this? You now, know, I have to deal with the older one and then now I have to deal with this other man. Exactly. <laughs> and then even the space. Remember, I have co-slept with my kids all these years. Mm. Um, so now out of a week, every Friday night, my son knows. I sleep in his room, we talk, we, we stay at whatever, we talk about anything. But Friday nights are his Friday. But then now yesterday, I didn't want to sleep in his bed because I was like, if I sleep with you, because he kicks, he flips over, he's yeah. hot. He's... So I told him, I said, I can't go on set tired. Mm. So we'll make it up on Saturday night. That's why we have a date tonight. And now, in fact, we shall go out to a hotel for Mother's Day, you know, because he told me, he was like, I don't want you working on Mother's Day weekend because I want to be with you. So, I mean, they express themselves. I keep saying, if you listen to children, they'll tell, they'll you. tell you. I'm sure you they'll said you. something to your yeah, parents. Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. at so some they point, mean, yeah. they don't listen yeah. or they don't. But I listen to and my I have children. To tell they you, say a lot. These pandemic babies are a different breed. Let me just not lie. <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry. They are, no, they're different. These pandemic babies, mm. they are the ones that are born, these ones, mm. for after pandemic 2019, Uko, mm. where? <laughs> it's like they've come with a new brain. <laughs> They say things yeah. and you look at them. My young daughter knows tumultuous. She knows vases. Oh, she knows but maybe things. because you spend so much time at yeah. home with them. I, I don't the know. Interaction. Yeah. Maybe. That's, that's they had more community, more but opportunity like, to practice or to learn or to probably. hear. I actually got closer to my children with the pandemic. During the pandemic. Because I was home all, all the time. So they are, they're intelligent. Mm-hmm. Ah. They're, they're very, very intelligent. They say things and you, you will, they'll make you think. Mm. And I, I just assumed it's all a new, new babies who are born after the pandemic, but I guess it's the interaction. Lots yeah, of people have been have. talking about it. Those, mm-hmm. you are, you are there every day. Every day. Your children got to know you. Mm. You got to know them. You watch yeah. them. Yeah. 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 Plus so the pandemic talk. was collective yeah. as well. It wasn't like just happening in your house or my house or your house. It was global. So everybody was kind of curious about the same mm. thing, having the same conversation. Which community, right? Yeah. This is like, we are all in this together. Yeah. As opposed to, you know. So let's so. explore that actually when I come to think about it. Because and mothering was born out of the pandemic. Thinking about what we were going through as women during that period. But then as we have been doing unmothering, I've also therapized and unmothered myself. Mm-hmm. Thinking about my relationship with my mother. Thinking about my relationship with my daughters. But then also, you said something interesting, and, and also a, an old professor of mine said, the pandemic forced us to sit and actually think about what's happening. Sit within yourself, because you couldn't leave. There was a point in time you couldn't leave your house and do anything. Mm. So you had to sit and slow down and only focus on one thing. And that made us also now start to think about other things that are going through our life. Mm. So if you were to have a breakdown, that's the perfect time you would have had a breakdown because you don't have external noise. Mm. You sit down and think, oh, my mother, where? That was not a good relationship. Mm. You know, Mm. so that that period is what I felt would have been like the best time to start thinking about, you know, parenting. So let's talk gentle parenting. What is your take? On gentle parenting, and do you actually do it? Gentle parenting. Yes. Oh yeah. I mean, see, I'm telling you now, my my eight year old, he has just character developed me. I think also I've mellowed. I'm aging. I'm like these days. It's not. It's not. We don't have to get everything right. We don't have to cross all the T's. We don't. In fact, he even <laughs> his brother is surprised. He's like, you mean she doesn't stress you about your grades? 
In fact, I mean, I'm like, first of all, I don't agree with any of the nonsense that you're being taught in school. It's irrelevant. Mm. And my other son is like, you're kidding me. You're joking. What, what, Where was what, this what, mother what, 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 when I was growing so, up? So the question now when it comes to gentle parenting, is that are you becoming your mother when she had you? Like you got the best of your mother. Yes, I did. Versus your first one. And I think it other, worked for me because I was a girl. And girls are not, I was not playful. I was not full of energy and whatever. It worked perfectly for my mom. Mm. And yes, when I was, so by the time I was 10 or 8, my mom was in her late 40s. We were tight as thieves. We did things together. I could do no wrong. I have never been spanked by my mother. My mother was of World War. I don't know what with my other siblings. They can't believe it. What? You know, they're like, Yanni, you have just, she has never touched me. My mom never even pinched me. What? But when you hear the stories of my older siblings. <laughs> <laughs> what did you ever say to her what you said to me? Firstborn what? girls deserve what? I don't know what I said. That, no she said to me, firstborn girls, every time someone says to me that I'm a firstborn girl, I feel like giving them a hug and ice cream because girls, <laughs> you've everything. gone through the war yes. no, for you, daughters. for you to be able to be where you are right now. Yeah, my yeah. mom. In fact, I remember when I was maybe my four or five years old. I mean, she was on a war path. She would beat the living daylights out of anyone. No. Who just crossed her. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the neighbors used to come and be like, please, please, please that's enough. Mama yeah. nani, I mean, my mom would whoop you, whoop them with a broom. Then she moves to an iron cord. It, yeah. it frays. Yeah. She goes, she gets something. She was on a warpath. Mm -hmm. Me, I and was just trying to stay touched. out of her way. Mm. But then also, I was not, I was not a crazy child you Doesn't know i was matter. just a cool calm None little of us girl were crazy who... but you were still beaten no but you imagine with boys uh, what no, i'm saying is you know your boys climb they throw they break they, they kick they... The electrical i mean outlets. have you seen have you lived in apartments where the boys come and key your car you know those <laughs> things <laughs> and that's what i'm that's... asking about gentle parenting from there, uh, you're not supposed to whoop them. <laughs> you're supposed to have a conversation. <laughs> this is true. So that is, that is, if that's what you're saying, because I, I remember my, my son, the caretaker came and told me, see, my son had, you know what he had done on the wall, huh? So we, all, we always have conversation. I think the guy was like, now, now Wambia was talking, you know, they shouldn't leave the house without an adult and whatever. I'm like, now who's going to monitor these children like they are? Mm -hmm. So I said, imagine if they damage anything, just come and tell me. So he came and told me, oh, they had drawn something somewhere. <laughs> on someone's so, car. No, 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 no. Oh, on a wall. Uh, so in fact, they are, they, you know, red soil, eh? Mm -hmm. They had drawn <laughs> graffiti with his little friend. So, I mean, we have conversations about it and about, you know, building things, not breaking down things and preserving things. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the only way you can do it. Mm -hmm. In fact, yesterday I was talking by my new landlord where at work came. And they're all the mubabas, eh? So they are sitting there saying, Siku zi hata tuchapangi watoto. Mimi sasa ni chape kachana kangu waji. Hatu chapangi. Unawambia tutu. Tuonge. So let's talk. You know, it was funny hearing it from somebody outside of my space. Circle. Eh? Yes. Circle. Saying that. And I mean, these are mubaba. You're thinking, this one, ma. Chapa. This school. Mm. school. Then they said, in fact, you know, at kuchapa is reserved now for mom. Okay. And then moms think they don't beat hard. Yeah. You know, so we just let the mom beat us. We just talk to the children. Which means there's... It's wider than you yeah, think. Yeah, something is happening. Yeah, he said he said he, he can never even imagine chopping his children. Mm. He can't, mm. but the mom can, you know. And, and, and her belief is she doesn't beat hard. In fact, that's why the mom says don't beat them. Yeah, because she imagines the man will beat them harder, harder than, than she does. Than she does. Then it's like no, your mama na chopping. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so you just know like it. My mom was ahead of her time because I remember I knew a spanking, like a proper beating, was on the menu. So yeah. I knew it was, it was an, an option. option. Mm. So that's really what helped mm. me is just knowing that that woman could, could, you know, like it's on the option. Mm. But I do remember being maybe five and asking her, Mommy, Nikki, a big girl, come on. Then I mentioned my best friend at the time, Utacha Kunichapa. And then she calmly, very calmly looked at me and she said, I'll stop beating you when you stop doing things that lead me to beating you. That was the first time I made the connection. Oh, there's been a behavior yeah. attached. Because prior to that, it was like a game for us. 
as kids we would the next day say oh ulinda kwa kina bugonjan ali vunjwa it was a big joke yeah. it wasn't like anything and even when i spanked or not spanked when i moved to my older son which i i, I saw i would never do again mm. i usually have a conversation and be like do you understand mm. what yes. you did wrong what got us so you you never had that conversation because you didn't make the connection <laughs> there was no connection like i'm going to beat you because you've done this no <laughs> it was just like one day i swung i used to have to swinging on the gate like a ride a rao we used to like a rao so i used to run to open my mom the gate for my mom so i could swing it open mm. and one day the devil whispered to me there's a whole tv what do you call it a wall unit mm. it has two swing doors and it's in the house so swing, swing on, on it, it. My brothers and my sisters I am here to tell you that it is still in existence in my auntie's house and every time I walk past it I remember that day that it is fell on one you. open I swung on it and it broke uh, and it was black so when it broke you could just see the brown wood <coughs> and then my mom came in the evening oh my god and then she saw her beautiful proper wood door hanging no hinge Of course I had bathed and eaten to try and reduce the beating yeah. because you know you have to But no. do what you can. I got the whooping of my life. My life like I remember but I don't know how she woke to me but I just remember knowing I would, like I know she's going to tell me this woman is crazy. But most of it was about conversation. Mm. Why and she used to, when my mom did this sign like this and she would lean in and say in kikuyu And this is why I'm telling you I'm just not mad. Good job. She should just walked me mad. She should have. <laughs> But that's that interesting. That's, you know, my, that's yeah, interesting. It was so much talking. Yeah. I'm a sanguine. Mm. Even now, I'm bubbly. Yeah. I'm talkative. So as a child, I was a sunny. Like, walk me so I can go yeah. play. But mm. her, she was more the talking. The understanding. Right. And, I, and it's, it's interesting that you say that because, and, and I keep thinking about what you just said, Bugo. The, your your second born got the best of you mm. but i'm i'm wondering about our parents and how how we <laughs> how we impacted them mm-hmm. and in in what way because whatever you you went through as last born as first born as first born will definitely impact how you parent mm-hmm. and depending on how long you've had to parent it's 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 always going to be something that's not going to be maybe the same you will try not to make it the same because mm-hmm. me i try i could chapaing the me i was chapward like i'm fungwa no i just said no like it's it's there were times and then i yesterday we were actually talking about it my mother used to do that she would get angry she would get massively angry and she would go on a tirade that would end up with you being chapward or thrown on something it completely triggered me you know like and and she she would and later in therapy when you're thinking about it someone would tell you think about what this woman has been through mm-hmm. right you're working on an existing job you're you know you're working in the government you're tired you're coming back to three who your husband has not done anything you put your bag down da, 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 da. the smallest thing that triggers you is who you will shout at you're not going to shout at your husband mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, I'm going to TV whatever. You are in the kitchen. Who's going to be your first target? Household. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be your second target? The children. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be your fourth target? The teacher who has called and said, "Hey, Maggie Leo, I'm going to see you nini nini. Kichapo ile utachapo hiyo siku." Yes. So those are the things that I, that I used to wonder. Like you've gotten the best of me because I've come from that. My child is not going to get what me I got. Mm. And so me I'm wondering because mine mine is different. Yours is more sanguine. You came from love and laughter. <laughs> <laughs> how are you like this? You know. Like how are you how how do you manage because we I have we have sister who like like I said. Mm. My friend tells me me I chop my son. I beat him a good and proper one mm. and I gasp. I literally gasp out like oh. mm. how How do you, how do you chapa your son now cuz I I can't imagine taking a stick to an 8 year old boy me naona ni kama at some point he can come and beat you 
yourself i don't know sorry <laughs> <laughs> but i just imagine like there will be a day he'll be like Mom, yeah because stop. because that's how my son communicates is if i can't do it to you then don't do it to me mm-hmm. yeah so that that's what i'm saying he's gotten the best of me because now i see it that way my older son got the kichapo and by the way he was not even a bad kid he was just what you're saying you come home you find gosh he has done or he didn't do or he didn't do his homework in fact, there's a time I found out he was hiding his kumon, you know, the kumon papers. Mm-hmm. He was hiding them at the pool behind the tank. You know, I'm like, what? imagine learn to just come and tell me, I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't like doing them, mm-hmm. but hiding them behind the tank. I mean, and you're paying, and, you're paying, and I'm paying <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I, and I said we co-parent. Their father is quite against it. Hey, mm-hmm. he's like, please, Somebody. please. Hey, but then he would say. I can't say too much about it because I was not there and I can't control that environment. Mm. But I'd really rather you don't eat my children. And you're the primary caregiver anyway. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So eventually I had to take myself for a meeting and have a conversation. Complete with writing pads and bottles. Water. What does that look like, co-parenting for you? Ah, oh, co-parenting. It is, it is something. <laughs> it is every day you wake up, you say, I shall be present and I shall make it about the kids and that's it. Mm. So it has been a very interesting journey. Of course, the older the children get, the more involved he gets because he kind of feels like when they're younger, all they need is mommy, mommy, mommy. So he's not that involved when they're smaller. But now he's like, I want to be part of everything. So we talk about anything and everything. We don't take anything for granted. We have a very big crisis of faith this week, (laughs) which I'm dealing with. Um, but I found that because that their father is religious, I'm not. So we have that, that glaring attack all the time. But I found that my 14 year old and I have become very good buddies. Mm. And I like that he's able to talk to me. He talks to me every day, three times a day if he can. Uh, the little one is starting to get into the relationship with daddy thing. Mm. Little one, not little anymore. He's eight. not little. He's mm. eight going on 48. I <laughs> so she just got out of postpartum. Yes. From, from yes. our other conversation. Yes. So <laughs> apparently postpartum ends at seven, seven years. years. I believe you. So you're, I believe now you. you're new. Now you're not postpartum. You're a new mom. Now you're just part Newly single. Oh, I love it. You're free. I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> shackles. The shackles of motherhood. I can feel it. And then also the child is changing. Yeah. He's, you know, he's growing and, the conversations we're having with him now, I'm like, hi, yeah, you're not throwing a tantrum. Mm. You're not making me feel mm-hmm. a sad, some type of way, you know, because then my son can, he can manipulate you. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> the co-parenting part has, has been a very interesting journey. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about how to even do it and, and making it about the kids and involving them and not making them pay for your choices. Um, mm. I think that that is one conversation we have with our dad all the time. Like we cannot make them suffer the choices we make, mm. so we have to put them front and center. Yeah. So we we I think we are doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, and what I like about their father is he's he's open to conversation. So when I call him out, he listen. I'll yeah. be like. We didn't need to go there with that one, or we didn't mm-hmm. have that. Call, or we didn't ha- need to handle that. He has those that, depending on his day again, because he also works. You know, he's all the way in Jamaica, so the, our hours are mm-hmm. flip flop. So sometimes when we catch him, you know, we we talk to him in the morning. It's early morning. It's busy. He has no time to give us a hundred percent. Da 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 da. And then we have to make appointments. And okay, it's, we block out Sunday at this time when we are yeah. all fine. We are all, you know. So it's it's a, it's very intense. It is work. Mm. It is work. But I can see it is working for the kids. It's and you, really well. you look healthy and happy and hearty. <laughs> like and I'm joyous. And it's the first thing I say. You're glowing. <laughs> well, please don't tell. Maybe there's a baby now. <laughs> I think I I would I do want to say to both of you that as the child of a parent who was similar to what you're aspiring to and what you've been doing, it really does pay off. I mean, you, you will have clashes for sure. And I'm a firstborn daughter and you know, mothers and daughters don't always get along. But the one thing that has kept my mom and I tight is that we don't give up on the relationship. 
I mean, I've reached a point where I even blocked her. Like we were in a really mm. bad place for a couple of years, right? But my mom, my my mom is like my person, right? Like I'm gonna call her after this. We meet for Mushene. She can call and say, I work at home. Do you have a client? I say, I just finished a session. What are you doing? I'm watching TV. Do you want to have lunch? And it's always like, like a, like a, like a collusion. Mm. Like the Ascari of the places we frequent, like, ah, oh, the managers come to say hi, right? And I'm in my forties. So when you, I know when you're raising younger kids, I guess I'm just saying I'm a bit farther ahead mm. as the child, not as the mother. Mm. It does pay off. It pays off that, like my mom, I knew, big, like a, a, a whooping was on the menu, mm. right? But I wasn't whooped a lot. So if I was to have children, I would actually have it on the menu. I just don't have to use it, right? Because that's how I was parented. It worked for me. But the thing I knew is that in my mother's house, she she made it clear. I'm mm. not raising a liar and I'm not raising a thief. So that thing you said about just come and tell me you don't want to do Kumon instead of hiding it, mm-hmm. that would have gotten a whooping because that was a violation of her, ah. like the non-breakable rule. Mm-hmm. I was once suspended by Mr. Aga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was reminding him before he passed away, may he so rest in peace. And we had a good laugh. And I went home knowing I'm going to get like the whooping of whooping. my life. <clears throat> and she got me home and she said, go and eat something. We ate in silence. And then she asked, I want to know exactly what happened. And I told her exactly in detail, knowing that my life was over, because I really thought this woman would kill me today. And you know what she said to me? I've heard you. Go to bed and sleep before I change my mind, because I'm not going to beat you. And of course, I quickly scampered to bed. (laughs) But what it taught me was that truth truly mattered to her. It wasn't like she'll forgive yeah. or not, but no lying, no stealing. What that has done is allow us to have a mother-daughter relationship, yeah. right? And now if she's pushing my buttons, I can say, mom, do you want to know the answer you want to know? Or do you want me to tell you the mm. truth? It's, I think it's, it's important. And I think I'm, I'm somewhere in between with the, with the older one and the younger one. Mm. So like you said, she, she, the younger one has gotten the best of me. Mm. The opportunities, um, better healthcare. Yeah, you can afford things. Now you can even find the yeah. to explain things. Yeah. Better so like- I am really, really. We laugh about this with uh, my friend Jerry a lot. Gentle parenting is it comes and it goes in waves. It depends. <laughs> it depends on context. <laughs> like the parenting is there. The gentle is uh, we will see. And, the, and the, that eight, the eight year olds push. They push your boundaries. You start gentle, and then you're like, get out of my face. So <laughs> at some point, like you know, I even told my nanny, you made me the the bad mm-hmm. parent. Where now the child is afraid. You know, like it's it's proper afraid. Like I'm going to tell mama, mm. and it's not like I chop her or anything. Mm-hmm. But the other day we went and I I, I took um a Rico and I went and asked her, "What is this? <laughs> a chopping thing? <laughs> <laughs> a chopping instrument?" Mm. And so I was like, "Me, I've traumatized my child." You know, because mm. you, you I, we usually we even had a. A chopper stick. Like, you're just like, this is a chopper stick. I will chopper you if you do things, you know. Mm. But with the intent and the knowledge of saying, if you do this, you will get this. Yes. And my sister-in-law told me, that's just at least acknowledge that there is repercussions for bad behavior. And explain but why, why is it violence? That's the, that's that's the, the thing. Other yeah. That's yeah. the right? thing. Because also, who chappers you who when chappers you make a mistake? Exactly. Like, now, I was like, mm-hmm. this morning. Who beats me? <laughs> Everybody said, no, so it was, it's okay. So, yeah, it like, to really say what other discipline can exactly. there be. It was that discussions that you will have to navigate mm-hmm. as a older parent, mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, even the older one, you don't even think, you just take it and, mm-hmm. chapa. Well, chapa, you live when you move on with your life. Mm-hmm. Now you have more time. You have more thinking to explain. And you're in the same space. Mm-hmm. COVID, remember? Mm-hmm. So I feel, I feel so energized. By having this conversation, I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel acknowledged <laughs> that my life is going to get only better. It's gonna get better <laughs> for sure. Than, yeah, for sure. Than us navigating. And I look this. at I look at their dad's life and, and he he was also raised pretty much in a single parent home. 
I see his relationship with his mother and I'm like, wow. But it was being raised. So he, he kind of also gives me pointers on, you know, how about you do it this way or you do that. But they have an amazing relationship. I mean, so amazing that even for me to make that decision that I'm going to be sleeping in my son's bed with them once a week. Mm -hmm. The older one is not interested, but I told him, the day you say, all right, I will be in there and we Mm -hmm. shall cuddle and sleep, whatever it is. But if you need, and I've I've taught him to always say, if he wants me, like what he he says, I just want mommy time. And then I show up alone and we do mommy things. Um, so the last time I think he came home on holiday, I mean, for the weekend and I, I was like, he came to my room and he just hovers, you know, he's really not he saying doesn't much. Say, yeah. So I said, do you want mommy time? Yeah. He said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so his father and his grandmother and his uncle that, I mean, his, his father has a brother. When grandma is around, they sleep in the same bed. You know that now in African culture, guys are like, I yeah. what? You know? Mm. So the last time we were visiting in their grandmother lives in Fort Lauderdale and, you know, I was sleeping with the boys and then their dad was sleeping with their, with their grandmother, you know, and that is how they always sleep when they're visiting each other. Really? Yes. And then they will talk through the night and then one person will doze mm. off and, you know, yeah, and I said, that's how I want to grow old with my boys. You know, yeah. I want to be able to just have nothing conversations and then talk into the night. I mean, how, how closer can you be mm-hmm. than just lying there and, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I do that. With, and I've said, I'll, I'm going to do that with my kids as long as they let me. So, yeah. so tonight I, I told you I have a date. Yeah. For Mother's, love for Mother's Day. Day. And I'd like to thank you so much. <laughs> as in, thank you so much. First of all, not for, not only because of this amazing conversation. Like you've opened up my eyes and given me hope and inspiration. So to watch it, but also taking your time. Cause I know you've taken time out of, um, your son's mommy, cause her nodding, your mommy. <laughs> Yeah, he probably out. called me 40 times. Probably. Like, like, swimming yeah, time man, is passing. No, I'm so <laughs> sorry. But we okay. appreciate it. And when he watches this episode, maybe he can come and tell us his experience mm. for today. Like, what were you doing? What was he yeah. doing? Well, he went, he, they went for haircuts. So then the agreement was once the haircuts are done, then I pick him up. And, and then, then you go. go. Then yeah. You yeah. Go. So really, thank mm. you so much for giving you, giving us your time thank and you. giving us new insights as to what you know, mature geriatric motherhood <laughs> looks like. By the way, I've told my gyna if I get pregnant, not just my gyna, I work with my GP and my gyna is above us. I said, if either of you put the word geriatric, geriatric. I said, you need to put a cover on that name. I know you doctors need to call me geriatric, but either of you calls me geriatric. That did not be my face. And but I mean, doctors are like, no, but it's a good thing. It is, it is, it is an opportunity. I have what? a friend who's just had two babies back to back, 45 and 46. No just way. The first, first and second, yeah. And I, so. I think it's, it's also important, yes, for us to acknowledge that you are past a certain Oh my date God. or you whatever. You feel like Maziwa Mala. No, no, no. What I'm saying is the doctor <laughs> is acknowledging health complications. Oh, fair enough. Yes. But if Past a certain, he should know. If warranted. I find the term geriatric on my is file, that, I'm billing him. It is warranted. He but um, know. what I'm saying is there's a specific way. There's a respectful way yeah. to have those yeah. conversations. Yeah. conversations. And and give me... Actually, you know, Bembeleza me more. Yeah. Tell me, you know now. We need to, they need to be more <laughs> reassuring. Yes. yes. Not, not. And to be honest, my guy Nami, he knows it. I, uh, just tell me, don't just tell me, go get an ultrasound. You have to talk nicely to oh, me. Oh, go do your ultrasound yourself. Yeah, and I, I, know. Just say, I, I mean, I mean, really. Yeah. At so, least tell me, go, go, go and do this test and this test and then come and we'll make a plan. At least I feel it's a way. Yeah. When you say geriatric, I'm about to go to NSSF to, to just panga line for my retirement. <laughs> your retirement plans as you have your baby. <laughs> so thank you so up. much. Thanks, Maggie, for coming back again. And thanks, Kabugo. And yeah, to Taonana. Thanks Ama. for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. It's such a really, pleasure. Very, yeah. very welcome. Mm-hmm.